I just got back from my morning run and I feel good. One of the thoughts that came to me is the thought of grief and the thought of grief, uh, grieving, grieving loss of friendship, loss of connection. Now, this is something that I don't know if many people talk about with their friends or families. I don't know if we're just are sucking it up and just moving forward. I don't know if you're talking about this. So I wanted to create a video about this to hold some space for the for the possibility that you may be dealing with this or maybe you may deal with this at one point. And that's the possibility of grieving friendship loss. You know, and there's a lot of reasons that people lose connection with friendships. Like I, I have a guy I went to high school with and I was in his wedding. He was my best friend in high school. We hung out every day, we talked every day, we lived down the street from each other. We were uh, star football players together, we ran track together. I mean, we always hung out, we hung out with girls together in high school. I was at his wedding, uh, you know, this was after college, of course. You know, we lost touch and I don't know why. Like, I don't know if I did something. I don't know if my behavior was out of alignment with him. He, he just he just went to cold turkey. He stopped answering the calls. Uh, he stopped texting. And then eventually I just accepted like, okay, this person doesn't want a friendship anymore. Maybe it's, maybe I live too far. Maybe they didn't want that. Maybe he didn't want the effort of putting in into the relationship anymore because we weren't living next to each other anymore. You know, he's living in his city. I'm living on the other side of the country. But I remember when this first happened and we haven't talked in like a decade, you know, I remember when this re relationship first started to fizzle away. I remember the, the grief I just felt and I didn't know it was grief at the time. But there was just a, a great deal of grief I felt because one, we never had a conversation about us not being friends. And then two, we never had like a like a falling out. We never had an issue. We never had a, a, a problem or conflict, at least that I'm aware of. When he, you know, just went cold turkey and just stopped responding, stopped engaging. You know, this was my best friend in high school. So you just wouldn't expect someone that you have so much you know, history with, like, you know, in sports, they say blood, sweat, and tears. Like we literally have blood, sweat, and tears together, like traveling together, being in the same football huddle together. Like I remember, I, I could see him right now. Like I remember looking over at him in the huddle one day, he was just gassed, just breathing. And the, the play that came in was for him to uh, run the ball. And I just remember, I, I could see it right now, just looking over at him and he's like, <sighs> And he was like trying to get his breath. You know, like I really have been in the trenches with this man. That type of friendship loss definitely hurt. It definitely hurt for sure. But then there's like another type of friendship loss where and like maybe maybe I'm speaking for him. Maybe I wasn't good for him. Maybe I maybe I wasn't in alignment with him. Maybe I was too toxic. Maybe I may be. Also, I'm not gonna take any of that personal because he has the ability to make whatever decision he wants for his life. Right, so that little line that I just said is for you. Understand that you don't have to take it personally when people no longer want to be in friendship with you. Maybe it's not about you at all. Maybe it's about them and their path and their new relationships. Maybe his new wife didn't care for me so much. And if that, and I'm not saying that if in case they see this video, because they're real people I'm talking about. If that's the case, that's okay. I mean, man finds his, his wife and he has kids with his wife and it is what it is. That doesn't, that doesn't change the fact that I, to this day, it still pains me to know that I don't have this relationship and I don't have like access to an explanation. Man, if I did something, let me know. Now here's the other the other element of that. Like maybe you're the person who has to end a relationship or maybe ending the relationship is not actually the play, but maybe you have to put up some distance. Maybe you can't talk for, you know, a few months or maybe even a few years. I've been through this with two of my friends. With one of my best friends, and you know, we went to college together, roommates, we grew up together. I was also in his wedding. I'm godfather to his kids. He's godfather to my kid. But we didn't talk for a year. And we didn't talk for a year because of a lot of reasons. There was a there was a specific incident that caused conflict, but it, and it brought up older wounds, at least for me, I'm not speaking for him. It brought up an older wound that I had. And as a consequence, it made me not want to speak to him because I felt like he couldn't show up for me you know, as a friend. The other element of that is that I was also depressed at the time. And I didn't know I was depressed, but I was, this This happened around COVID 2020. I was getting whooped. Not only did COVID whoop me, uh, I had a son that year. So that was whooping me and it's still whooping me right now. I had a lot of things happening in my family as well. So when this conflict happened, I didn't even have the capacity to even show up and, and, and deal with it. So I, personally, I was just like, whatever, like, I don't have time for it. I don't have the energy for it. I'm, I'm getting whooped by life. And this is the possibility for you too. 
It's like maybe you weren't able to maintain certain connections because you were depressed, because you were sad, because you were getting whooped on. All right, that's possible too. So in that situation, I was thinking about him and I called him and I said, or no, I texted him. I said, hey man, you know, I'm traveling right now, but when I get back to the city, like, I would love to see you, like, go for a walk and like just talk and just, you know, see how things are going. And he was like, okay, dude. he's like, I'm down, let's do it. So we went out and, and for, our, for our talk, and this is very important. If you ever fall out with a friend or you guys go some time without communication, or if there was a, a moment of conflict and then you guys are coming back together, it's very important that you talk about the conflict. It's very important that you have space to talk about the conflict and, and space to talk about the residue of the conflict, all the little ripple effects. Like think about it like a paper cut, right? I don't want to get too glory, gory, but like let's just pretend like if you cut a hand off, like that's a uh, that's you cut the hand off, right? But if your hand is there and you just have 30 paper cuts, you know, that's going to be extremely painful as well. So in these situations and in these relationships where you have a whole lot of paper cuts, those still need healing. Even though the hand wasn't completely cut off, those still need healing as well. So make sure that you're talking about the, the big problem as well as all the little micro problems, all the little, the micro stressors that come. And what you want to do is build a container. You know, the alchemists talk about building a vessel. You want to build a vessel and this vessel is to put all the contents in there. So for example, when I went with my friend on that walk, the vessel was our communication. And honestly, it was our long relationship. And it was in this walk that we're on, right? I brought I brought a um, marijuana joint, we smoked, which is completely legal where we live. I know in some other states and countries it's different. Where we live, that's part of the lifestyle, it's completely legal. Um, it's a way to bond and connect. So we, we chatted, we smoked, we talked about life. We went back, there was a space where he gave me the space to just share what I was feeling, what I was thinking, what I was observing. Then I listened, I gave him that same space and we heard each other. It wasn't about agreeing or disagreeing. And this is what, why I think so many people have problems in relationships is you're looking to be right. You're looking to dominate. You don't, like, like real relationships don't have, real healthy relationships don't have domination. You know, I don't know, I don't know where you guys are getting this from, but real healthy relationships don't have domination. Now that's not to say there can't be a leader. There's there's always a leader, and it, it doesn't necessarily mean it's one person all the time. And most healthy relationships, there is like an ebb and flow to leadership based on what's happening, based on the time of the day, based on the time of the season, you know, specifically in friendships, because in friendships, you're supposed to, oh, you want to go to that museum? All right, yeah, I don't really want to go to that museum, but part of being in relationships is yeah let's go oh you want to get i want to get pizza oh you want to get tacos all right let's go right, we can get tacos that's fine like that is that compromise is part of what happens when you're in relationship so you're not always going to be in leadership you're not always going to be the one speaking sometimes you have to be the one listening right so don't 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 try to reconnect with an old friend and think okay i'm going to dominate I, this person has to shut up and hear what i have to say because that that vessel is not strong that's a that's a broken vessel all right and then the last thing i want to say about this is this sometimes in order for you to save your life you do have to part ways or have extreme boundaries with someone who you consider a friend and this happens when the lifestyles just aren't in sync and one lifestyle is just not in alignment and it's not conducive to health healthy living to you know living the life you deserve it's not conducive to that maybe maybe you have drinks maybe you do maybe you go have a few drinks but maybe you're reasonable maybe you have a friend who you know i hate to say it but maybe they're an alcoholic and they're unreasonable and they do irresponsible stuff like drinking and driving you know maybe maybe they're just irresponsible and if you choose to part ways with someone who you can go have healthy a uh, healthy drink a social drink and maybe this person can't i mean i understand maybe you don't believe in violence right and, and you try to practice peace which is understandable because there are consequences for being violent and maybe you have a friend who's extremely violent maybe they're physically violent maybe they're, they're verbally violent cursing at people cursing people out you know maybe you guys go to like pick up a burger and, and and they didn't get their fries or their fries were cold and you notice that this person has like an extreme temper and they're cursing at the person um you know the clerk and maybe you don't carry yourself that way you know you may not see it as a big deal a person cursing out the clerk for some some fries maybe there's no harm that day i mean of course the clerk is not going to do anything they're on a minimum wage job there'll be no there'll be no real consequences for that you could get away with that type of that's abuse but you could get away with that type of abuse. You could definitely abuse the clerk who's probably a teenager. You can probably get away with that type of abuse. And then the question is, are you gonna stay in friendship with someone who operates like this? Someone who's abusive to people like, like waiters and waitresses. You know, are you really gonna stay in relationship with someone like this when you're choosing to be 
peaceful and respectful. Like you probably won't, you know, and that's just an example. But the big question, the the big question, I guess, to leave this video with is not only who I want to be, who do you want to be? Who do I want to be? Who do you want to be? Who do I want to be? But who do you want to surround yourself with? What, quali what what type of person do you want to surround yourself with? And if it's true, what I'm about to say may not be true, but if it's true that you have a limited time on earth, is that true? You tell me if it's true that you have a limited time on earth, if it's true that you have a limited time on earth, then why would you surround yourself with people who are destructive, who are violent, who aren't good friends to you, who, who make you play like big brother or big sister as a friend, right? You need, you need mutual friendships where you can show up and there's like a mutual love, a mutual giving, a mutual acceptance. You don't need these friendships that are draining where you, you got to be the one paying for everything. You have to be the one always setting up the plans or you have to be the one, you know, asking them not to drink too much or you, you have to be the one. And it's, of course we check on our friends, but if you're habitually like in a mother or father role with your friend or you're habitually in a big brother, big sister role. I mean, is that what you want? I'm just I'm just asking there's nothing wrong with it. I'm just asking, is that truly what you want? Or would you actually want some friendships where people are meeting you the same way that you deserve to be met? Do you want friendships where people are pouring into you the same way that you pour into them? That's really the question. So this is a big topic. Friendship loss is a big topic. Nobody really talks about it. At least I haven't seen much on on this and i wanted to just create a vessel for us to have this conversation so if you're hearing this on a podcast come on over to our youtube channel to my youtube channel leave a comment on the youtube channel i'd love to hear from you love to hear what you what you think about this how you dealt with this if this video is making you think about any possibilities about relationships you need to change um, or to be more present in you know i wanted to be very neutral in how i told this because every single person who hears this we can probably see ourselves in all of the different types of friend dynamics that i described i don't want to guilt you or put you down or you know make you feel like you're the problem or you're the victim but i also don't want to paint the other picture like oh we got to cut them off they're the only problems the truth is we're all humans we make mistakes we could all be better we could all learn from the experiences we have and with that being said my name is Celeste Mcnut the Third. I'm the author of the brand new book, Live the Life You Deserve. Thank you so much for being with me today, and I'll see you next week.